There are some completely game-changing new Soulbind powers being added in patch 9.1, as well as some that are complete garbage. So I'm going to help you sift through the rubbish and find the best new Soulbind powers for your playstyle. The very first thing you'll notice is that the new powers have been added in the exact same pattern for every Soulbind with the same paths and number of conduits. So that means that every Soulbind will gain access to one more potency conduit for extra damage and healing, and have the choice between a finesse conduit for speed and utility, or an endurance conduit for survivability. You'll notice that they deliberately put strong defensive powers on the finesse conduit path and strong utility powers on the endurance conduit path. This can be pretty frustrating, but it stops Soulbinds becoming too influential in a certain area, and I guess potentially making people unkillable. But there's a lot to go through, so let's get right into it. Starting off in Bastion, we'll take a look at the new Kyrian powers. So starting off with Pelagos, looking down his endurance pathway, we have Better Together. During combat, moving within three yards of a party or raid member inspires both of you, increasing your mastery for one minute. Players may only be affected by one such effect. I actually love this one, not because it's particularly powerful, because it's not, but because it's kind of a step towards how I think a bard class might eventually work in WoW. Imagine having a dedicated high movement class like a BM Hunter with this in your raid, tasked with running around through everyone in the group every minute just to keep them all buffed up. I'd really love to see someone try that. And looking down the finesse pathway, we have Path of the Devoted. After recovering from a loss of control effect, you take 15% reduced damage and your movement speed cannot be reduced below 90% for 6 seconds. Now this may only occur once every 30 seconds. This one is purely for PvP, and it looks incredibly strong, especially for things like flag carrying or even just classes that are very easily kited. And his final power is Newfound Resolve. At any moment during combat, there is a low chance that your doubt will manifest itself for 10 seconds. Directly facing your doubt will overcome it, granting 12% primary stat and stamina for 15 seconds. This one is huge, and I expect that it will get some tweaks before we see it go live. Essentially, a black ghostly elemental thing will appear in a random direction from your character, and just facing yourself towards it for a moment absorbs it and grants you the buff. 12% primary stat for 10 seconds is a huge buff. And moving on to Claire. Down her endurance pathway, we have Spear of the Archon. Movement speed increased by 6% while out of combat, and you gain 3% critical strike chance for 10 seconds after damaging an enemy above 90% health. In dungeons and solo content, you'll probably be able to keep the crit buff up permanently, so I think it's definitely geared towards that kind of content, and the extra movement speed is always going to be welcome. Down the finesse pathway, we have Hope Springs Eternal. Your file of serenity reduces damage taken by 10% for 8 seconds, and its effects are also granted to your lowest health ally. This is a pretty nice defensive cooldown for anyone, and I think Claire is already a pretty popular choice for tanks, but you're gonna have to give up a defensive conduit to grab this one. And Claire's final power is Light the Path. Your Valiant Strikes grant a 0.25% critical strike chance per stack. When your Valiant Strikes heals an ally, you each gain 5% critical strike for 12 seconds. Valiant Strikes is Claire's core ability that basically builds stacks every time you crit, and it heals an ally for the number of stacks if they drop below 50% health. So with this upgrade, you're gaining crit chance passively with every crit that you land. This is looking insanely good for classes that rely on a high number of crits. Moving over to Mechanicos, and looking down his endurance pathway, we have Soul Glow Spectrometer. Damaging or healing a target analyzes its merit over 15 seconds, increasing your damage or healing it by 1%, increasing by an additional 1% every 3 seconds. You cannot start a new analysis until the previous one has finished. This is just a nice passive throughput increase, because this one ramps up to 5% damage over 15 seconds, it's mostly going to be useful in longer fights like raid encounters, and it's actually a pretty decent buff for one of the minor powers. If you take the finesse pathway, you're going to get reactive retrofitting. After taking physical or magic damage, gain a shield that absorbs damage equal to 8% of your maximum health for 10 seconds. Each incoming damage type may trigger this effect once per 30 seconds. This is actually incredible, and in its current state I think it's going to cause a lot of people to swap over. Two 8% shields every 30 seconds is a huge bonus in almost all forms of content, but again you do have to part with that defensive conduit to grab it, so it might not be for everyone. 
And Mechanicos' final power is Effusive Anima Accelerator. Your Covenant ability, so Spear of Bastion or Divine Tolls for example, release a blast of overcharged anima at your target's location. This deals 3.6k arcane damage split evenly between all targets over 8 seconds. This then reduces the cooldown of your Covenant ability by a set amount per target hit, up to a maximum of 20 seconds. This is essentially just a nice AoE damage buff, but because this one changes depending on your class, some are going to see more of a benefit than others based on how you use your ability. For example, this sounds absolutely amazing for Divine Toll on Paladins, who almost always use this ability in a large pack, but it sounds kind of clunky for Druids with Kindred Spirits, which is more focused around buffing your allies. And now we're going to head over to Maldraxxus to take a look at the Necrolord Soulbinds. So first up we have Plague Divisor Marileth, and down his Endurance Pathway we have Viscous Trail. When struck by a snare, you drop a puddle that lasts for 10 seconds. Enemies that step in the puddle are slowed by 70% for 5 seconds, and this may only occur once every 60 seconds. Another power that is very clearly targeted at PvP, that again I can see being great on any flag carriers or even just kiting classes, but the 60 second cooldown is a bit off-putting, I guess it'll depend on how big that puddle is as to how useful this is going to be. If you decide to go down his finesse pathway, you will get undulating maneuvers. While above 80% health, 5% of all damage taken is delayed and spread out over 5 seconds. This gives anyone a bit of a monk stagger effect, but at only 5% over 5 seconds, I can't really see it being too game changing. And Marileth's final power is Kevin's Oozling. Your covenant ability summons Kevin's Oozling to fight alongside you for a certain time. His attacks cause your enemies to take an additional 2% damage from you, and he periodically grants your allies an absorb shield. This gives you an extra bit of a bursting window every time you pop your covenant ability with the extra 2% damage that goes out, and the shields make this sound like quite a nice choice for dungeons or PvP content, depending on how good these shields end up being. And next up we have Emony, and down the Endurance Pathway we have Soul Slough. After standing still for 5 seconds, the next time you move, you and your allies gain 20% increased movement speed for 10 seconds. This sounds incredible if it doesn't have a cooldown. It's basically a mini stampeding roar that you can just trigger as often as you like. This might be an absolutely crucial pickup for some raid or dungeon boss encounters. Down the finesse pathway we have resilient stitching. While above 90% health you gain a shield that absorbs magic damage for one minute. This effect may only occur once every minute. Magic damage reduction is always very welcome and this shield looks huge at first glance, especially because it's always going to be up when you first enter combat. It really seems like they've tried to make this particular soulbind a lot more popular with these two strong choices. And finally, Pustule Eruption. Fleshcraft covers you in three pustules for every one second that you channel it. Taking damage or being healed pops one of these pustules, which deals damage to nearby enemies and heals nearby allies. So this essentially turns your fleshcraft into a damage and healing ability, so that it's a lot more useful in cases where you're not inherently worried about dying. And with a full fleshcraft channel, you're going to get 9 charges of these pustules, so depending on how the numbers fall out, this could actually be pretty significant damage and healing. And finally for the Necro Lords, we have Bonesmith Hearmere, and on his Endurance side, we have Carver's Eye. Damaging an enemy above 90% health grants you 200 mastery for 5 seconds, up to 5 stacks. You can't gain this benefit from the same target for 10 seconds. This is a really interesting one with some crazy burst potential, and one that I expect to see some exploiting videos about. If you AoE 5 targets at full health, you instantly get 1000 mastery for 5 seconds. Those are some serious numbers, and some classes can do a lot in those 5 seconds. Down his finesse pathway, you're going to get Waking Bone Breastplate. When 3 or more enemies are nearby, your maximum health is increased by 5%. This effect lingers for 5 seconds. In contrast to the other choice, this one is incredibly boring, with just a 5% flat health increase that won't even apply for most boss encounters, so I can't really see too many great use cases for this one. And finally, he has Mnemonic Equipment. When you damage an enemy that's below 35% health, 3% of the damage done is repeated over 5 seconds. Healing an ally grants them the ability to have their damage repeat this way at 30% effectiveness for 5 seconds, with a limit of 2 allies. 
This is a really strange one, which essentially just increases your damage done by 3% in the execute phase of a fight, and healers can increase the damage of their last two healing targets by 1%. So they're all relatively minor in the scheme of things, but interesting to see more and more powers focusing on increasing someone else's damage. And with that, it is time to head over to Ardenweald to check out the Night Face Albines. First up we have Naya, and down her endurance pathway we have Called Shot. When you critically strike, you gain 20% movement speed for 5 seconds, but this may only occur once every 10 seconds. This is a really nice move speed buff, but because you can only use it in combat and can't really trigger it on demand, I don't think it's going to be that practical, and it's probably never going to be up when you need it. Down the finesse pathway on the other hand, we have Survivor's Rally. When you fall below 50% health, you regain 20% of your health over 10 seconds and receive 5% additional healing from all other spells and abilities, but this may only occur once every 60 seconds. Now, I may be a bit biased as a healer, but the idea of my group members having this makes me extremely happy, <laughs> because you're probably not falling below 50% much more than once per minute, it's gonna feel like this always kicks in to save the day. And finally, Naya has Bonded Hearts. Gaining a stack of redirected anima from Grove Invigoration heals up to 5 nearby allies for 2% of their health. If any of the affected allies are another Covenant, redirected anima's mastery and max health effects are increased by 50% for 5 seconds. This is another pretty incredible power. You get redirected anima stacks pretty often from just attacks and heals, and each one healing the group for 2% each seems massive. There's also a pretty good chance at least one of the people in your group is not a Night Fae, so the bonus stats are going to have a pretty big impact too. And next up we have Dreamweaver, and going down the Endurance pathway, we have Cunning Dreams. Entering Soul Shape slows enemies near your starting point by 50% for 6 seconds. Of course, this is yet again another largely PvP power that is going to be really strong for kiting classes. Down the finesse pathway, we have Waking Dreams. When you take damage below 80% health, you gain a shield for 30% of the damage amount, lasting for 3 seconds. At a glance, this seems really strong for people taking periods of constant damage, like tanks or in PvP. You're essentially taking 30% less damage from all sources whenever you're below 80% health. This is something that I'm definitely going to be trying out in arenas on my Resto Druid. And Dreamweaver's final power is Dream Delver. Dealing damage or healing a target grants you 1% increased damage or healing to that target for 4 seconds, up to 3%. Another pretty boring standard throughput power, but this one's going to be significantly stronger on plate spinning classes like Affliction Warlocks and Resto Druids, because the overtime effects will basically keep this buff up at full strength on every enemy or party member for the entire fight. And finally for the Night Fae, we have Hunt Captain Karain. Down the Endurance pathway, we have Vorkai Ambush. After interrupting or disorientating an enemy, they deal 5% less damage for 5 seconds. A completely useless ability for the players that I pug with because they never interrupt anything. But jokes aside, it still doesn't seem that strong at only 5% for 5 seconds. Most bosses rarely use an interruptible ability, so it's not super practical for PvE content. I could see it being useful in some PvP cases though. And down the finesse pathway we have Hunt's Exhilaration. When damaging an enemy or healing an ally within 8 yards, you gain 3% leech for 5 seconds. This is an amazing passive little leech boost that melee players especially should be able to keep up permanently. It's definitely the stronger of the choices for most situations. And finally, Karain has Wild Hunt Stratagem. When your damage or healing is enhanced by Wild Hunt tactics, you gain Wild Hunt Stratagem for 1 minute. The next time you damage an enemy who is below 35% health, or heal an ally who is above 75% health, Wild Hunt Stratagem is activated to increase your damage and healing to such targets by 5% for 10 seconds. Because you gain Wild Hunt tactics when attacking targets above 75% health, or healing targets below 35% health, this has quite a complex interplay that means it will be useless on raid bosses, and pretty poor on dungeon bosses for damage. You essentially have to get your target into the execute phase within one minute of your proc happening to gain the damage bonus, so this will mainly be useful for trash packs in dungeons or in PvP. And lastly, but certainly not least, we're going to head to Revendreth to check out the Venthyr Soulbinds. And starting with Nagia the Mistblade, on the Finesse pathway, we have Sinful Preservation. Health potions and health stones grant you an absorb shield equal to 50% of the amount healed. 
This is pretty big considering how powerful on-demand absorb shields are across all forms of content. I could see this being used en masse by groups to negate certain deadly boss mechanics. Down the endurance pathway, we have nimble steps. Enemies within 8 yards are slowed by 10%, and if you fall below 35% health, enemies within 8 yards are rooted for 4 seconds. This can only occur once every 60 seconds. This is another PvP focused power that is perhaps not quite as strong as some of the others, because the 10% slow slow is pretty negligible and only really benefits melee classes. The root mechanic is pretty interesting though, but in a lot of cases you'll probably be so locked down by the time you get below 35% health that a 4 second root is probably not going to save you. And her final power is Fatal Floor. When the haste effect of Euphoria ends, you gain 10 seconds of either 20% increased critical strike chance or versatility, whichever you currently have more of. This is a pretty incredible upgrade to your burst window and probably gives some of the biggest throughput numbers of any of these new powers. The only problem is that it can be very hard to time the Euphoria proc with external factors like Lust or the start of a new pool. Moving on to Theatar, and down his finesse pathway we have It's Always Tea Time. When Soothing Shade activates, Tuppence and Gubbins each offer you a cup of tea, healing you for 1% of your health every second and reducing your damage taken by 5% while you're standing in the shaded area. This is a very nice defensive power, but because it's activated by a proc, it's probably going to happen at some pretty unhelpful times unless you're always taking damage. And again, of course, you're giving up a defensive conduit to get it. Down the endurance pathway, we have life is but an appetizer. While you're well fed, you gain speed and avoidance. This one is pretty underwhelming, with neither speed nor avoidance being particularly in demand stats for most people. On top of that, it's only during the well fed buff, so it's only generally going to be seen during raid encounters and higher mythic plus runs. And finally for Theatar we have Party Favors. Once per day you can speak with Theatar in Sinful to obtain the Mad Duke's Tea, which increases your primary stat by 3%, or your haste by 3%, or your critical strike by 3%, or your versatility by 3% for one hour. This one absolutely takes the cake for the strangest new Soulbind power. It feels oddly reminiscent of world buffs back in Classic. However, contrary to how other people have interpreted this, the Mad Duke's Tea is actually a consumable item. You don't get the buff itself from Theatar, he gives you the item with a 3 day expiry that you can activate to start the 1 hour buff. So in theory, assuming they aren't unique, you could collect 3 of these over 3 days and then use them in succession to gain the buff for 3 consecutive hours. That's a pretty strong buff if used like this and it should last you most of your raid night. And then to round us out, we have General Draven. Looking down his finesse pathway, we have Regenerative Stone Skin. Any overhealing done to you will heal for an additional 15% of the overhealing amount over 6 seconds. Again, my healing biases are coming out, but anything that benefits overhealing is always a great choice because it happens more than most people probably think it does. However, I'd probably still only pick this one up as a tank to see the most benefit. Down the Endurance pathway, we have Intimidation Tactics. While below 50% health, Door of Shadows cools down 50% faster. And this is a really strange one that I just can't work out a good use case for. How often do you just sit below 50% health for this to have any kind of meaningful benefit? If this cooled down a throughput ability, there would be at least some kind of insane risk-reward trade-offs we had, but for Door of Shadows? Just, I can't see it. For me, this is definitely the weakest new power introduced. And Draven's final power is Battlefield Presence. Each nearby enemy trembles at your presence, increasing your damage and healing done by 1% and reducing damage taken by 1%, up to a maximum of 3 enemies. Unfortunately this is a bit of a boring one again that's just raw throughput and damage reduction which is only going to be 1% on single target boss fights, so this power is really only going to shine for dungeon trash. Now I'm sure we'll be seeing some tuning between now and 9.1's release date for at least some of these new powers because there are some astronomical gaps between some of them at first glance. But it's obvious that they've tried to give some stronger powers to the lesser used soulbinds. It's going to be really interesting to see if the additions are enough to make people swap their primary soulbind or even their covenant. Let me know which powers you're keen to pick up for what content down in the comments below and as always if you liked the video help more people find it by giving the like button a tap. If you want to see more Shadowlands and 9.1 content from me then please make sure you've got your subscribe button pressed and the notification bell turned on. But until next time, thanks for watching, take care and have fun picking your new powers.